and welcome to The Sherlock Show. I'm Charlotte Collins and joining me on the sofa today are Georgina Blasky, Lou Huff and Heather Steele. Welcome ladies. Today we're going to be chatting about this year's hottest fashion buys from the sublime to the ridiculous. Four Weddings and a Funeral has been announced as the most re-watchable film so we're going to be sharing ours plus the books we're loving right now. Beauty editor and makeup artist Zoe Taylor is here with her 10 favourite beauty products, plus fashion influencer Katie Impey is also here with her five elevated daytime looks that you can replicate at home. You won't want to miss it. Finally, Tor is back with the latest in her wellness series. This time it's about supporting your immune system, which is pretty good timing for this time of year. But first, uh, List, which is a global fashion shopping platform, uh, have revealed their year in fashion report. They do this every year uh, in which they talk about the hottest trends, products, basically everything you need to know about the fashion that has been. Obviously, this was a slightly weird year for fashion, um, but they have revealed their list of the 10 hottest products. These are the most shopped products of the year. Uh, so we thought we'd talk about five of them. Um, First up, number one, the hottest product was um, a face mask, obviously, 2020, um, but it's a specific one. It's by the brand Off-White. This blows my mind. Blows my mind oh, What do you well. guys think? Like, I'm not surprised it's a face mask, mm -hmm. obviously, but it's so ugly. It's so ugly, isn't it? It's... But do you think it's men driving that trend? Like, it, it's not a very feminine face mask, is it? No, no, but it is a really cool brand, though, isn't it? If you think how many people would sort of cover anything yeah. from that label, and I guess it's more affordable than yeah. some of the other things, like with me and the Vampire's Wife one, just wanting a piece of so the label, and that's an affordable way of doing it, perhaps. It's so true, actually. We were looking, um, we ran a thing on best shirts for SL Man yesterday, and Emma Willis, which is like a, you know, a top, top tailor, but really expensive, um, is doing face masks for £25. Yeah. And presumably so, like, I guess face mask is quite a good entry-level product, isn't it? Georgina, would you spend money on a face mask? Well, I would spend money mm. on a face mask, like but money. not a Sorry, lot of money, like, on face mask? money on a <laughs> no, face mask. No. I mean, I guess for someone like a tailor, they've got offcuts of fabric. Yeah. I mean, what a brilliant way to use your supplies yeah. and then stick in a little label. So and, true. Yeah, brilliant money-making. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would buy a face mask from Gap happily. Yeah, mm -hmm. buy so the multi-pack, and they're great. And I think, But the idea of seeking out a designer face mask doesn't really interest me. Yeah, no. I agree with that. Although Heather, I guess your point, like about it being quite ugly, a lot of like it, that style, a lot of quite ugly things are really hot products. Yeah, the trainers exactly. that go wild or whatever. There's one um, on this list that I totally agree. Is okay, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, putting something ugly against your face. Yeah, but it's weird. Weird. if your vibe is street, if your vibe is more like streety, it's not for me. It's yeah. not for me. Yeah. Next. <laughs> okay, next. Uh, number two was Birkenstocks. We touched on this um, when Laura was talking about her slippers that are on her wish list um, a few weeks ago. Um, you're a big fan. Yeah, love, 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 love. Yeah. Um, like I feel like I'm ahead of the curve for it being <laughs> this this, uh, this year hot. Product. Product. Um, but yeah, I think you can't go wrong, and I think they're comfy, cool, yeah, great. Yeah, do you, All know, do you wear back as well? Uh, no, do you know why the bit inside, um, the bit that goes like it, that molds yeah. to where your toes and things, yeah. it doesn't work for my foot. Is it too big for your foot? It's I quite don't know. Spread. Have well, you tried I have the narrow, quite a flat. narrow shape because they do narrow and wide. I find it's the bit you know where the toes are, yeah, and then there's like a ridge, yeah, yeah. that bit's in the wrong place for my oh, foot. Oh, I quite like I find that bit really comfy, yeah, same. yeah. Maybe I need to try the other width, then. yeah, okay. Heather. You're a Birkenstock wearer? Yeah, I love them. Although, similarly, when I first got my pair a few years ago or whenever, everyone was always like, oh, they mold to your feet. And I wore them on holiday with my friends and they'll remember. It was like 40 degree heat anyway. And my feet were ribbons. Yeah. But once I wore them in, yeah, like, yeah you, have to, you have to put really? them in the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but yeah. I hadn't quite appreciated them when I took some new ones on holiday. But now they're the comfiest things ever. And these shearling ones, surely yeah. they're comfy. Well, I was going to ask, if it's shearling, is it shearling on the sole as well? Yes. The so whole, that would like then a soften yeah. that moulding. Yeah. yeah. Yes, wow. that's true. There you go. Okay. Yes, I actually bought a shearling pair. Did we talk about this on the podcast? I don't, <laughs> I don't think we did. I bought a sh I've been desperately seeking a shearling pair for a really long time and they were sold out everywhere. And then Lou was in a meeting, this is during the first lockdown, and came out of this meeting to like a thousand messages from me being like, emergency, help me, help me. I was like, oh my God, something's <laughs> happened to Charlotte. This is terrible. Like, I, I must stop everything at once and call her back. <laughs> but basically, the Birkenstocks had come back in stock in both colours and I didn't know which colour to go for. So, um, anyway, so I ordered them, but then I, then I just panicked and cancelled the order, which I've never done anything before. I just thought I wouldn't know how to wear them. But now I'm but regretting now. that. I should have oh. just kept Amazing. With or without socks? With. Both. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You need a good, like, grey, nice knitted. Grey cashmere. Yeah. Is that just indoors or outdoors? No, it's outdoors. outdoors. Yeah. You outdoors. wear the socks with the open toe burger yeah. socks yeah. outside. Yeah. 
It's a look. Oh my God, that is a look. That's great. <laughs> yeah. I'm with you on that one. Maybe we need to do a story on that. <laughs> I think it takes a certain personality to maybe carry that off. It depends <laughs> what you're Definitely wearing elsewhere. Um, okay, number three is Crocs. Crocs made a comeback. I'm not. Gonna, I'm just going to put my hands up and say I love a Croc. Oh no. I no. Don't know. I just love any chunky shoe. So what's wrong with a Croc? What, do you own a pair? No. Well, you can't love but I, that No, much. but I would. I'd buy a pair. Maybe to, a to completely black pair now but no they're the one things even when they were around the first time i honestly could not wrap my head around no. them and i still find it weird that that's in the top 10. they look like gnome shoes yeah but i'm i'm into that actually i know you're into that yeah. there's another <laughs> pair of shoes which we've had a debate over that. charlotte's like these are the best yeah. shoes ever i do i like I a really like, comfy no, ugly shoe and i like all the ones you know you can put gemstones <laughs> in exactly. yeah i do i Can't think like that jw anderson vibe no. your money where your is i want to see these as okay pairs. i'm gonna buy it and wear it and secret santa careful what you wish for yes i'd like some for christmas <laughs> um, okay, number four is Uggs. Yes. Yes. Passionate. Very enthusiastic. Yes. Yes, okay. I've had sand colour, grey, black, always the ankle length. I've loved them. These naysayers who say they've just come back in. Well, they've been in <laughs> my wardrobe <laughs> years, and they are, I just love them. I love them. It's all about the ankle length, yeah. is it not? It's got oh, to be, yeah. I mean, I don't know. You're the fashion no, 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 I go short, yeah. short, yeah. short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I yes. think it's here or the, the sort of slightly like a booty. Not like here. There's yeah. No. There's a length. There's, there's one that's like here these yeah, days, which is too low. You want that one. Yeah. But I disagree. One. No, I don't like that one. I oh, think I that's still too classic UGG. I like that tucked in with a, like a tracky and tucked in. Nice. Heather, would you I don't know. I never had one the first time around because they were out of my price range. But now, yeah, I'm sure some black ones I could definitely be tempted to wear outside. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. How do you wear them? Oh, I would wear them with everything. <laughs> I like, I think you, they're totally, again, this sounds, we say this all the time, but you can dress them up, dress them down. Yeah. I just I mean, think quite hard to dress up. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you can dress them up, but like, no, you, like, you, you right. could wear, you could wear a, like a really beautiful dress and like something a little bit smarter on the, on the top half. Yeah. But then if you want to be, you know, if we're allowed to host dinner parties mm. again, perhaps depending on what tier we're in and you wanted to wear something comfy at home, but not your slippers, yeah, agreed. That'd be then amazing. I think that's the perfect <laughs> yeah. product to wear. Yeah, yeah, agreed. And there's that whole kind of, there's a lot of loungewear obviously around at the moment. And that I, I agree with you with like a trackie and maybe like a trench and yeah. a beanie. Quite cool, amazing. Mm -hmm. um, finally, the Frank. Well, not finally. This is just. Um, this also made the list. Um, is the Frankie Shop tee? This is the shouldered tee that has been ripped off left, right, and centre. Mm -hmm. To be honest, um, how do we feel about it? I'm personally a little over it. Yeah, I am too. I think. I don't know. It was a real. It's here. Then as soon as sort of everywhere on the high street does it, you're like, I think it's it's past it. Um, but I see the appeal um, of it. But yeah. yeah, not for me. It's flattering. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. wouldn't wear it because no. of my arms, but I appreciate it's a nice top. Mm. Okay. Uh, right. Well, do have a look at the list in Dags online um, for more of the hot products. I feel like I've got so much more to say. We should talk about this again. <laughs> um, let's move on and talk about uh, the most watchable films for weddings and a funeral topped a poll uh, for uh, Britain's most rewatchable movies. Um, do you guys know what the rest are? Should I, take, should I reveal no, the top five? Them. Okay. So that was obviously number one, uh, Skyfall. James Bond was number two. I'm not sure you could watch that over and over I, again. I agree with you. Let's let's talk about what okay. constitutes a rewatchable film afterwards <laughs> because there are some weird ones on this list. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, three. I find Very it rude, but there will be one exactly <laughs> a bit specific. Four is Monty Python's Life of Brian. Yeah. Um, and five is Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Were Rabbit. Cracking oh, film, but I'm great quite film. surprised that it's top Cracking five. Top five. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what do we think makes, what makes to you guys a rewatchable film? Like, what does it have to have? Because I agree, I find Skyfall a bit rogue in that mix. Heather? I guess, yeah, just one that's been around quite a long time and you know everything that everyone's going to say, but you can just sort of mindlessly put it on when you don't need to watch something. But then also you can be wrapped and watch the yeah. entire thing, I guess. I think that's a really it's good be quotable. Mm. I quotable. I think it also has to be quite a comforting film. Mm -hmm. I think you yeah. want to feel good at the end of watching it. Yes. So I think, yeah, there's more sort of lighthearted or warm films. I, yeah. I, I agree with you, but I'm surprised to hear you say that based on your most rewatched film, which <laughs> is The Notebook. Yeah, I mean, I don't feel warm at the end of the notebook. <laughs> but you actually know, no. it's the best love story oh, ever. It's so depressing. It is so sad. And um, I often, like every month, I, I think I was doing once where I have to have a good cry. Yeah. And if I'm like overdue, I'm gonna <laughs> up, then um, I'm like, right, I just need to put on the notebook and I'll be fine. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I, uh, I personally find, I have this with TV shows as well. I really don't like setting myself up to cry. I've, I'm, yeah, like the yeah. opposite there. So I find it, okay. if I'm going to sit and down, sit down and watch the notebook. Yeah. Cool. But I just I think it's, it's the most wonderful love story. And I get a real like 
like warm feeling inside from right. watching it. So even though it's desperately sad. It? <laughs> okay, good. Um, Georgina, that. you've also got a love story as your most rewatched film. Yeah, When Harry Met Sally. Yeah. I think it's just like my ultimate rom-com and I put it on. It's like, it's like having a cup of tea with an old friend. Yeah, totally. I sit down and I'm like, and I know there's the bit when she's going to cry when she finds out that he didn't marry her because he didn't love her because yeah. then he goes and marries someone else and you're like oh my god it's tragic <laughs> and I just find the comedy of it and it was the first time I'd come, come across Nora Ephron's writing and Harry Connick Jr's music mm -hmm. and I just find the whole package and it's in New York and oh it goes through Christmas and New Year and autumn and I just yeah. love it I love all the styling yes. how they move through time how like her hair changes and I love Carrie Fisher in it just all of yeah. it it's the whole thing and I actually have sat down with my kids and watched it yeah. to the point where they will quote it occasionally Aww. with me. I'm just you like, must oh, love that. Love it, yeah. love it. Yeah. It's quite unique as well. I can't think of many other films that kind of go through the passage of time with people mm. in that same way. It's quite different from yeah. a rom-com, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I, I do love that film. Love it. Um, Heather, yours is... Obviously. Characteristically cool. <laughs> yeah. on. Is it? it is, it's because it's not like girly and, and uh, grace. Yeah, Star Wars, Star Wars, basically. Wars, yeah. Just, yeah, I can watch, not all of them, obviously, no one talks about the middle three films. But yeah, no. most of them I can just put on at any stage and be very happy. I say I've never seen a Star Wars oh. no, Not one. But, no, I know, no, I know no we've kidding. said this before, but I just don't know if now, at the age of almost 30, in this time watching it, whether it would be, I don't know, maybe it would be amazing. Yeah, Mind's so blowing, but I don't know. Yeah, with like a period of time and, yeah. and how you felt when you first watched it and you yeah. go back there when you watch it now exactly. whereas if you started it from a fresh now would you still feel the same? yeah you're just like this is crap yeah, yeah like would the special effects be impressive or yeah. not yeah, so I don't know <laughs> like, like my dad watches all the old James Bonds like absolutely yeah. loves it, and they'll be on TV and you're like what is this rubbish <laughs> that was something like you see the person yeah, cranking yeah. the, the door open and that kind of shit and also just not very me too the old James Bond no oh, oh, terribly, terribly not, not. <laughs> terribly um, me too um, and Heather sorry you had a second one which was High Fidelity oh yeah I just love that film I could watch it at any time it's just amazing. Jack Black is excellent in it. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. cheery, it's sad, it's a love story, but it's really sarcastic and it's got a great soundtrack. A bit of everything. Um, well, I went seasonal with mine because I actually do think we've talked about this on the show before and I have talked about The Parent Trap and Mean Girls and kind of probably my most teenage rewatched ones. Um, but at this time of year, it's the holiday, which I'm ashamed to admit I've already watched like five times. Since, <laughs> yeah, since like... September is probably where I, I like draw a line at love actually there's some like I haven't watched Elf yet but the holiday is my kind of like gateway drug okay. for yeah Christmas I'm kind of yeah. surprised that, lo that love actually wasn't in that top five yeah yeah yes I know it's a weird top five I would have chosen that over <laughs> Wallace is it, and is it a British list <laughs> yeah it's British okay, yeah, yeah also how do we feel about four weddings and a funeral oh, oh, yeah. oh I love it love it love it yeah, yeah. I and I, I would, could have actually put any Richard Curtis film yeah. in there again yeah. that's like a real comforting British yeah. Yeah. actually anything you yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I went to see Four Wednesdays and Funeral at the cinema three times the wow. year it came out oh, wow. so it's definitely really it. watchable yeah. I, mean, I think that is my favourite one actually that yeah. or, or About Time which I've spoken about oh, I still haven't seen that okay, cool. <laughs> I feel like I've got lots of movie watches you do <laughs> um, alright finally let's talk about what we're reading right now um, obviously talking about films got us thinking about books too um, so I want to know what's, cur what's currently being read and Heather um, yours obviously has caught my eye because you're reading A Little Life Ooh. oh have you read it? I feel like I've spoken about yes. you, it to you both on the mm. show or podcast before. But yeah, it's I haven't read it before and I've wanted to read it for ages. It's 720 pages long, so it's taken me quite a while to get through it. But it, I, I'm, I've basically got 200 pages left oh. and I just, I half really want to read it because I'm desperate to know what happens, but I don't want to find out what happens because I know it's just going to be devastating. How much about it did you know before you read it? Um, I knew that it was about these four men and their lives from sort of meeting each other at college when they were 18 through to their later years and their friendships and how it all changes and that it all centres on Jude who's this sort of really sensitive character mm -hmm. and a dark past that he has. But yeah, it, I, some of it is definitely shocking. So, uh, like, so I had no idea how shocking yeah. it was going to be before I read it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's amazing. It's Incredible. one of the best books I've read in a very long time but I, yeah I'm really like upset even now like just really like I don't know I just almost don't want to read the ending because yeah. mm -hmm. I think I'm going to be very upset it really stays with you doesn't it yeah, yeah. there's a kind of yeah well I always I always yeah. it um, but I think it's one of the only books that that you come away from saying that is the best thing I've ever read and I never want to touch it again yeah like, I will never read I can't, that book yeah it's incredible exactly um Georgina what are you reading right now so I recently finished The Hearts Invisible Furies by John Boyne, which I really, really enjoyed. I got into a bit of a bad rut with books, actually, recently. I don't know whether... I've just found it hard in the evening to really settle mm -hmm. down and commit to, to reading. And 
this just kind of took me on a journey from 1940s Ireland where he's growing up, he's adopted into a kind of quite unloving family having been, he's, he's the son of a teenage um, Catholic um, girl who is completely outcast from her rural community and it's, it's a comedy but then suddenly you're crying and what these characters go through in their lives to survive all the things that come their way, it, it's just, it's very, very moving and really shocking actually. Um, I really recommend it. It's, it's kind of an, a roller coaster of ups and downs. Sounds great. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's good. And he goes between Ireland and America. And so you get to um, touch on kind of the 1980s AIDS pandemic. And then it goes back to him moving back to Dublin and um, kind of reconnecting with people in his family who he'd been outcast from. Okay. So it's, it's a real a family saga. Okay, sounds um, amazing. Yeah, it's really good. I've got really that on good. my, uh, next to my bed, like, to read, but maybe not next, because it feels like Do another you're... sad oh, one. <laughs> well, it's quite life. funny, though. I would say there are <laughs> okay. definitely some funny moments, but I did have some, I did have a good cry yeah. as well. But after a little life, I tried to move on to something heavy straight away, and it was just, yeah. I, <laughs> you don't have the emotional capacity, so six, find something light. Yeah. Um, I often have a theory that only, that good books have to be sad. I always say that, but actually, I think we're going to prove that wrong with our recommendations. Yeah. Um, Lou, yours is The Vanity Fair Diaries. But yes. Around. So, like, embarrassingly, yeah, late I'm, I'm party. embarrassed to say it again, like, how, A, how late I am to read this, but it's kind of been on my list for such a long time. And um, I'm just really bad at reading when I'm not on holiday. And um, especially over the last few months, it's kind of something that I've been really, I keep saying to myself, right, you just need to put in the time to do it and focus. But as you said, I just find it hard to sort of concentrate. And I sometimes find myself reading like the same three pages over and over mm. again. I'm like, I've just taken nothing in. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this, um, yeah, so the, um, the Vanity Fair Diaries um, is, yeah, I'm so, I'm sort of a chapter, two chapters in and fascinated, but I love and normally I'm more of a fiction girl, actually, um, but interested to see how she kind of climbed the ranks and, you know, life at Vanity Fair. This story is Tina Brown, Sorry, who Tina was the Brown. editor of Vanity Fair yes, in the States for a very long time. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> um, yes, previously from Tatler yeah. um, and moved over to New York to take over the reins there. Um, She's like a lesser known Anna Wintour, isn't yes, she? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm excited for lots of juicy juicy details to come out um, of the magazine industry. So my recommendation is... is like a follow-up to that if you so you need to read the Vanity Fair Diaries first and then you need to read The Glossy Years by Nicholas Coleridge um who was managing director of Condé Nast um for like 30 or well various roles but ended up um and his his career there spanned over 30 years and so he was Tina Brown's is um her diaries from over the years published his is uh, more of an autobiography it's his memoirs um and they work so beautifully in tandem together because they're talking about the exact same period of time obviously one's New York one's London um, but a lot of the same characters, this, and it's all about the publishing industry at that time. And if you're at all interested in kind of the heyday of publishing and magazines and glossies and all the glamour, and he's got, I mean, he's pretty salacious. Like, he doesn't hold back on Princess Diana and Kate Moss, and, um, yeah, it's full of juicy gossip, and, yeah, they're both, they're both just lovely reads. Yeah, great. So I recommend. Um, all right, thanks, everyone. Uh, next up, beauty editor and renowned, renowned makeup artist, Zoe Taylor, is here with her must have beauty buys perfect timing for Black Friday. But first, Tor is back with her top tips on how to boost your immunity. Hi, I'm Tor, I'm Sheilux's wellness editor, and today I'm gonna to be talking about immunity. Now, our immune systems have never been more important, never been more in the news, and I think everyone is really interested to know what they can do and what they can perhaps take to boost their immune system. And excitingly, there are so many amazing developments meaning there's so much more to your supplements than vitamin C. This is your Zuki's vitamin C, and I've been taking this for the last year. Touch wood, I haven't had a single sniffle or cold since taking it, and it's absolutely amazing. So the difference with this, it comes in these little sachets, a liquid vitamin C, so instead of a capsule, the idea with this is called liposomal technology. The liposomes go directly to your cells, so you get 100% of the vitamin C as opposed to a little bit less if you're taking it from a capsule. It's really amazing, and it also contains vitamin E, which is really good for your skin. And vitamin C can also support collagen production, so as well as your immune system, it's a really good one for your skin. A mushroom supplement might seem like a strange thing in terms of the immune system, but they've actually been used for centuries to help people fight off bacteria and viral infections. But this Mushroom Plus is absolutely amazing and a really good way of fitting in lots of different mushrooms into one supplement. This one has lion's mane, reishi, chaga, and cordyceps, which are four of the main 
immune boosting mushrooms and taken together have a real synergistic effect. So as well as boosting your immune system, they're also really, really good for your mood. So if you suffer from stress, this is also a really good one to take. So I'm gonna talk about vitamin C again, but again, this is a vitamin C with a twist. And um, this is a brand new product from a company called Leapfrog. It's called Leapfrog Immune. And it's a blend of vitamin C, zinc, and lactoferrin. Now zinc is also really good for the immune system, but lactoferrin is quite a new ingredient in terms of immunity research. And it was one of those potent, natural, antiviral and anti-inflammatory proteins that can really help your body fight off bacteria and pathogens. So it's a really good one to take at the moment. It comes in little capsules that you pop out and you don't have to swallow them, you can chew them, which is quite good. So what I love about this one is that you can either take it kind of one a day throughout the winter just to maintain your health, or when you're feeling run down, take one in the morning, one in the evening for about five to 10 days. And it really does help to lessen your symptoms of whether it's a cold or a flu. And if you're interested in reading some of the research they've done, have a look on their website because they're doing some really, really cool stuff. I'm now gonna talk about vitamin D. And vitamin D is a really interesting one because the NHS has always recommended vitamin D in the winter months. But even in the last few months, there've been some amazing studies showing that vitamin D is actually really, really helpful when it comes to boosting your immune system. And I've always been a fan of better use sprays. And what's so clever about these is you literally just spray them under your tongue. I absolutely love this. You can carry it in your bag, keep it in your desk. It's really, really good. So that's it from me guys. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope there's some useful tips there for you guys to look after your immune systems as the winter is coming. And as ever, if there's anything you want me to talk about, any supplements, any ideas, please, please let me know. Hope to see you all next time. Welcome back. Now, few people are more qualified to recommend beauty products than Zoe Taylor, whose stellar career in the beauty industry guarantees her tips on what to buy and how to wear it a second to none. She's here to talk us through her favourite beauty picks at John Lewis right now. And first of all, welcome. So nice to have you here. Thank you very much. I mean, second of all, John Lewis really is the place to go for, for basically every brand, isn't it? It is, definitely. It's amazing. You just can get everything in one place. And it's just really easy. Everybody's really well trained. They're really helpful. You get really good advice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't really feel pressured into getting stuff. I think it's a really good beauty destination. Actually, probably my favourite. There we go. High praise indeed. Even if you can't get into the store right now as well. Obviously, they've got a great selection online too. So, all round really, aren't they? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so you, Zoe, have selected some of your favourite products available there right now. So, should we talk through them? I mean, the most amazing range of brands, products, you can basically get it all there, can't you? You definitely can, and I have chosen my absolute mm -hmm. favourite products, ones that I can't live without, ones that I'm loving at the moment, and um, some of them might seem a bit familiar, and some of them might be ones that you've never even heard of before, mm -hmm. um, but they are definitely my favourite ones for this season. Okay. And you guys, Zoe is so in the know, it's a joke. So let's <laughs> crack on, because I want to hear all your recommendations. First up, there's a Kate Somerville cleanser. <gasps> I have only just recently discovered this, and okay. I know it's been around for ages and ages and ages, but I sometimes, although I know everything because I'm a makeup <laughs> artist, I can be a bit late to the party on sure. some things, and this has totally, totally changed my life because I have quite dry skin, mm -hmm. and it's very hypersensitive as well, and this product is really good for... Um, keeping your skin very hydrated and very nourished and you never get any kind of breakouts or any kind of reaction. Mm -hmm. My skin is very highly reactive now. Mm -hmm. I think it's because I've tried so many products on it. I think everybody's a bit like that yeah. now because we're sort of chopping and changing all the time, trying to find the best products. Um, super easy to use and it gives really beautiful, clean, cleansed skin, gets rid of all makeup. Amazing. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you to push your hair back just so it's not hitting your mic. Is that doable? Okay. Sure Can I have it a bit nice. like that? Yeah, I'm sure that'll be fine. Um, yeah, perfect, there you go. Um, yes. And, and Kate Somerville, I mean, we're all suffering from breakouts so badly right now. Mask knee, it's, it's affecting us all. So yeah. is that the brand to turn to then to sort that out? I think that um, the Kate Somerville range is very well developed. Mm -hmm. And I think that it caters for everything that you need. But I do think that with this mask me and the constant, I know, so I know, bad. and it's so and it's sort of everywhere, yeah, isn't it? It really is, yeah. Um, it's really good to find a cleanser that deep cleanses for you. And she recommends herself to use it, do double cleansing with mm -hmm. it in the evenings. Um, and I find it's gentle, but very, very effective. So that is my That's absolute what we want. fave. Great. Um, a bit of Elemis. Now we are massive <gasps> Elemis fans at Sherlock's. Oh. Tell us about this. I'm not surprised you are. Yeah. I am too. I mean, it's kind of a staple in my kit mm -hmm. and my personal kit and also my 
work kit, yeah. my onset kit. Um, this is um, an overnight mm -hmm. mask. And the reason I love it so much is because sometimes I forget to put it on overnight. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I just want to make my skin look amazing. And although it works best when you're sleeping, you can just put it on in an emergency when you're doing your teeth and you're looking a bit tired mm -hmm. and you want your skin to look amazing and you just leave it on and it makes your skin look incredible. So if you were to do it in the day like that, do you wash it off or you just put it on and put your makeup on? Well, what I would do, which is how I use it in my kit, because mm. I often don't really have the opportunity to put it on a model's face and then they go to sleep for a of bit. Course, I'm hoping yeah. they stay awake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I would put it on, I'd, on a beautifully you know, clean mm -hmm. skin. I put it on and then I leave it. Okay until as long as I can. You know, sometimes it's when the hair's being done, mm -hmm. the model's feeling relaxed, the skin can regenerate a little bit. The skin looks very hydrated, very plumped, mm -hmm. um, gives really even tone. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I just tissue off what I haven't used, okay. but mostly, I have to say. It absorbs. It absorbs, because I think everybody's skin is desperate for hydration yeah. at the moment. And this is kind of the underlying theme of all of the products that I've chosen. Um, it's kind of a very kind of gloopy. Yes. But it looks, I mean, that looks so hydrating, doesn't it? You just yeah. want to smear that one in I mean, it, yeah. it really is. It's lovely. Gorgeous. And, you know, it goes really well. It's, as I said, it's meant to sit on your skin mm -hmm. and then be, you know, absorbed in. But actually, it gives this very beautiful glow. So I do love it, I have to say. It's a bit of a kind of a makeup hat. artist yeah. trick, actually, yeah. really, that one. It's what we're all after all the time. Yes. Um, talking of getting a glow, uh, what's up next? Um, next up is the Laura Mercier pure canvas illuminating primer. Um, I love this because mm -hmm. I love anything that's illuminating because I think skin, for me, my skin needs to look like skin, mm -hmm. whether it's on me or whether it's on my client, the person who's in my chair. Um, this is gorgeous because it's got this very glowing, kind of soft. Oh, that's so nice. It's very light reflecting yeah. and it also is great if you don't really want to be wearing any foundation mm -hmm. at all and you just want to wear that by itself because it makes skin look great, it kind of blurs any imperfections mm -hmm. and again gives that very hydrated finish. Um, works very well under foundation. I was going to say, if you do want to wear foundation, under or over? Um, Either. Under. under. I would wear it under and I put it all over mm -hmm. and down the neck so that then you can apply the foundation so it just looks very warm and you could see it had that kind of... Um, peachy undertone mm -hmm. which means it does suit everybody and if you were to put something glowy like that under your foundation does if you then were to use a high coverage foundation would that block it or no you should be buffing it all in together it should buff it all in together and there is a moment while it's all still a little bit wet where you can okay it's where you can kind of yes and mm -hmm. you can kind of mix it in um if you were using a very very high coverage matte foundation mm -hmm. on top of a an illuminating primer that, which yeah. you probably would lose yeah. it but also you probably would want something else. Okay. If you were the person that wanted that, you wouldn't be going for the primer. No. Got you. Uh, speaking of good coverage, oh, a classic. Isn't it? This is Estee Lauder Double Wear. The Estee Lauder yeah. Double Wear. I have to say, I love this. This is such a kind of old school it foundation. Yeah. And I love it because it's really set. Mm -hmm. And you can use it in a way that you can shear it out with your own moisturizer. So whenever I use it, I put it onto my hand mm -hmm. and then I put a little blob of my own moisturizer, whatever it is that I'm using. Sometimes I actually use the, mm -hmm. the mask because mm -hmm. it's so hydrating. Yeah, yeah. Mix it in with a brush and then buff it into the skin. Amazing. And that's for like a very sheer skin-like finish okay. because I, I don't want skin to look like it's got makeup on. I yeah. think it needs to look like... You're not supposed to see your foundation, are you? Well, there's two, I think mm. there's definitely two schools of thought. Um, if you're going for a natural makeup look. You're not yes, sure yes, yes, yet. exactly, <laughs> yeah. for a natural makeup look. Um, and I think that it's really nice to be able to work it into the skin mm -hmm. so then the skin feels like skin looks like skin, but then you can build up the coverage where you need it. So then you use less, less of the moisturiser and more of the mm. foundation and then buff it into the areas that you need it. Okay. Use a small brush if you have any spots. Okay. And then you get really good coverage, very good... Um, continuity of colour mm -hmm. on the face as well. Got it, rather than adding a different um, concealer or something. Yeah, because sometimes mm. I find that doesn't work and then suddenly totally you agree. see like the difference in the colours. <laughs> I've got very orange spot today, <laughs> a bit like that. No, your skin looks lovely, darling. Oh, thank you so much. Um, um, yeah. But yes, I think it's really... Consistent. Yeah, I very, to be honest with you, I tend to just use a concealer or just use a foundation and use it and build it up. I don't tend to mix yes. too many. Okay, good tip. Uh, a lip balm next, <gasps> unexpected. I know. Mm. I'm big on lips. Yes, I, I know you are. <laughs> yeah. Zoe has a brand, a lip brand, Tinker Taylor. I do, it's true. And so I'm all about lips and it's yeah. all about 
looking after your lips. And I think this is a great product. Mm -hmm. Nooks Lip Balm. I think most people have heard of it yeah. and most people love it, but it's very multi-use. Sorry, it's very <laughs> multi-use because you can use it as a kind of highlighter, mm -hmm. like a sheer highlighter, which I love. Makes skin look very kind of glossy and gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And you can use it here and then down the center of your nose and maybe on your eyelids if you wanted yeah. to, which is really nice. And then obviously on your lips as normal. Great. But I like a product that you can kind of add a bit of shine. A bit of everything. Um, okay, we're moving on to palettes now. Bobby Brown, queen of palettes. Ah, oh, do you know what? These palettes are yeah. something else. Okay, so. They are the colors are so good. Really beautiful. And what makes them so beautiful is all of these different colors. Mm -hmm. Now, my favorite colors out of this are probably the pink and the red and the orange mm -hmm. because I think that they're really good to bring out the whites of your eye. And can, can eyes. everyone wear those pinks? Everyone can wear them. Okay. And I think people are just coming into knowing about mm -hmm. that now. Um, these more sparkly colours are so pretty because you can just apply them straight with your finger. You don't necessarily yeah. need a brush and then you can add it just in the centre of the lid okay. so that it really opens up your eyes. And Rather than going for full lid coverage. Well, you could do, but I think that it's nicer to have as a highlight on in the inner corner and build it up just with your finger. Super easy. Okay. This is like the e These palettes are the easiest ones to make any kind of... Um, smoky eye, day smoky eye, mm -hmm. just a bit of coverage. I'm not a big fan of concealer on the eyelids or foundation on the eyelids. Okay. I much prefer to go in with these pale colours and build them up okay. because I feel like you get much better tones. It's quite hard as well to blend your foundation into your eyes, isn't it? I always find that quite a struggle. I also think so. it makes your eyes look smaller because you yes. end up taking your concealer or your foundation all the way up to your yeah, lash line true. and then it closes up your eyes. And really, when you're choosing the colours that suit you, mm. you should look at the natural contour colours that you have of your eyes. Okay. So it really does have nothing to do with the eye colours or anything like that, or your hair colour or your skin colour. Yeah. The colour that is around your eyes is the colour you want to mimic. So if it's a bit more brown, then those are the colours that you want. Sure. Or if it's a bit more purple or yeah. whatever or it is, those, whatever, yeah. those are the undertones that you want. Okay. Um, and that's kind of what I work with to emphasise. And there's a little something for everybody in this palette, isn't there? There is, yes. And I just think it's so pretty. And they're very highly milled, so they're very easy to blend. Got it. There's another Bobbi Brown. It's a this is, I suppose, a slightly more condensed version. Yes. Shall, Shall I show them together? Shall I show you them together? Go for it. Let's see this so one. this is the, um, oh, this is much more brown yeah. and these sort of jewel-like tones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a bit more condensed yeah. compared to the, compared to the... Yeah. 12 versus 8. Yeah, okay. and it has, doesn't have the pink in, so actually the pink was a big deal for me to have all got those it, pinks it, okay. and reds in there. <laughs> um, and this is like, the, these are all lovely mattes, then you can mix in this mm -hmm. lovely, like, it almost feels like liquid metal when you put it on. Yeah. It's so gorgeous, yeah. so pretty. That you can see, is amazing, isn't it? even on the... On my hands, you know, it's really lovely. Oh, wow, it's got a real sheen to it, hasn't it? Gorgeous. Yeah, and they're really... Really lovely. Again, are these colours, can everybody wear those colours? Yes, absolutely, because they've got these lovely warm undertones, which yeah. is what's so important. It's what we're going for. It is a bit, yeah. yeah. I think it's important to um, really make your eyeballs very white and like open up the eyes. Okay. That's what you want. That's all you want. Mm -hmm. um, blushes, next from MAC. MAC, yeah. Oh, sorry, John Lewis literally have every brand. John Lewis, have every, every John Lewis brand. actually have everything. Yeah. They do really do. They have everything and they don't, you know. Don't mess about. They don't mess about. You can't. There's nothing missed out here. Amazing. So Mac, which yeah. we all know and love, of course. Um, this is a great palette. Uh, it's got like this. These these three are, are matte. These mm -hmm. two are matte, and this one is. Mm -hmm. And then it's more of a sort of highlighter, more yeah. shimmery. And this is a obviously the bronzer, which has got the gold flecks through it. Got it. Um, it's quite a good palette, this, because mm -hmm. it does kind of suit everybody, okay. and they're good pigments in the in the um, blushes, as you can see. I mean, it's MAC, isn't it? So yeah. You know, they know what they're doing. Um, I was asking you earlier about uh, cream blushes versus yes. powder blushes. And, and tell us, if you want a natural look with a powder blush like that, what do you do? What's your application tip? Well, I think that people have a um, preconceived ideas about blushes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think a lot of people feel that powder blushes are kind of old fashioned now. Mm -hmm. But they, with this new world of cream blushes, which we all love, mm -hmm. um, but it's nice if you have an oilier skin type, if you want your blushes to stay put. Okay. And having a powder blush, it doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna look cakey. Mm. So as long as you take it and blend it in properly okay. and blend it while your makeup's still not set, yeah. because then you can really blend it in. Okay. And even though it is a powder, it doesn't necessarily 
become cakey. Okay, it and will blend with a liquid foundation. Or yeah, I think so, properly. definitely. And I often think sometimes you can get really, really good pigments. Yeah. Sometimes with the creams, they can shear out yes. really easily. Yeah, yeah, so true. Um, and especially if you're doing like a draping look mm -hmm. or you want to, whenever I use a, a powder blusher, I always take it up into the, okay. into, into the outer corners of my face because okay. then it gives a little bit of a softer contour. Okay. I like that. So, and that's what you could do if you've got the various colors. As yes, well. so rather exactly. Than putting bright pink all around the rest of your No, body. but yeah. also what's nice is, is that at, by whatever blush you use on your cheeks, if you add a little bit over your eyeshadow as well, yeah. then it kind of pulls the whole look oh, together. I always put a bit at the tip of my nose. Do you? I yes. Do. Yes, that top tip from me. People it might love be really that. stupid, but no. I, I do. I feel it warms up my face a bit. I think it does, and sometimes just to do it on the bridge of your exactly. nose, and like I think blushes shouldn't just be for here. Yeah, yeah. You know, because they're such good colours, all those lovely pinks and yeah. with the gold flecks through them and stuff. Designed you know. to warm up your face. Yes, exactly. Um, we've got a setting powder. Yeah, we do. This is the By Terry Hyaluronic mm -hmm. Acid um, setting powder. I mean, that's so. So there's hyaluronic acid in the setting powder. It has all the skincare benefits, this. Okay. Does that mean you wouldn't have to otherwise use a hyaluronic acid or is this more of like a boost? To this that? is more of a boost. Got it. Um, so what it does is, is that it sets your makeup. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's really, really white, mm. um, but it comes out entirely. Okay, clever. So you don't have to worry too much about, you know, when you see paparazzi photos, people have no, exactly. bright white under their exactly. eyes. Exactly, yeah. so it's, it's one color, yeah. that's all. Uh, it has all the skincare benefits. So it's really hydrating which you don't normally expect from a powder mm. you would expect it to be almost a bit dry yeah. but uh product development you know by terry's it's great improved. at that yeah um it means that your skin is being like hydrated throughout the entire day and you can top it up what's great about this is it also has like a blurring effect okay so you could use it directly over your mm -hmm. highlighter yeah. yeah um if you decided you weren't going to use a foundation and yeah. it would work really well okay. just if you just wanted a quick yeah, swoosh yeah, yeah around quite good if you're doing like zoom calls and whatever else and you don't want to put on a whole face aren't we all yeah aren't we all um and then equally works excellently over the top of foundation Fine. and it does and it really will set and it lasts and helps. it sets and it lasts and it looks really good That's all and it also does this funny thing with the fine lines Ooh, where it kind of it kind of completely blurs, blurs them out. Right, well, that's the product to get then, isn't it? That's great. the one. <laughs> um, finally, we've got a brow product. This sounds amazing, this. Oh, yes. I mean, Benefit do get it right. Mm -hmm. This is a brow filling, sorry, brow micro filling pen. Okay. Um, it's got these three nibs. So clever. I don't know if you can see on camera, but it's based, the nibs are like that, aren't they? Yes, and yeah. they're also kind of, they go down like that. Yes, yes, it's like, it's like that. It's like that. It's like that. That's it, yeah. yeah. So... Really good colours, they yeah. come in lots of different colours. Um, and the idea is it mimics microblading. Genius. Which, so you can get each hair okay. mimicked onto the eyebrow, which it, I think is important. And it makes so much sense if you think about using a normal brow pencil where it's just a block, that's never gonna look as natural as that. No, is, it's really good, yeah. honestly. And you can really flick it so that the hair looks really, really natural. Genius. Yeah, so I love that. And also it seems to stay on forever. I don't know if it's actually made for this, you know, if yeah. that's its UPS. USP. USP. Uh, <laughs> but it does it anyway. But it does it anyway. It stays on for, it's quite, you know, 24 hours kind of thing. Oh my God, amazing. Mm. Sorry, that was such a good haul. I literally feel like I need to go and spend so much money now at John Lewis, but thank you because I want it all. Yes, good. And you should get it all. It's all super easy to use as well. Um, thank you. So, so great. And so many good tips. Um, of course, we will link all products in the show notes below. And do remember to check it all out at johnlewis.com. Next up, Katie MP, aka The Mum Life Styled, is showing you how to elevate your comfortable everyday looks. Don't go away. Hello, I hope you're keeping safe and well during this lockdown 2.0. I don't know about you, but it's been all too easy this time to just stay home and hibernate in loungewear. Um, but I wanted to share with you some really easy, simple ways to elevate those casual pieces. Um, so at least we can give the impression that we've made more of an effort than we actually have and not go too far out of our comfort zones. Um, starting with the knitted cord, which is everywhere at the moment. I wanted to share with you this cord um, from H&M. It's not cashmere, but it is gorgeously soft. Um, and it's a three piece cord. There's a lovely little knitted bralette underneath this too. Um, but I just love the gold hardware. I just think it really elevates it and makes it look really sophisticated and um, a real, really pull together outfit. When in fact, it's probably the most comfortable thing that I own at the moment. 
Another look that is always my kind of go-to when I'm on the run, I might have meetings, but I've got the school run in between. Um, I love to layer a blazer over um, a hoodie. Um, and this blazer is Blaze Milano. It's probably my biggest purchase um, this year. So I try and kind of shoehorn it into um, lots of different outfits. Um, I wore it loads with cycling shorts in the summer, um, but now it's drawing a bit cooler. I think it looks really great with a pair of leather leggings, some chunky boots, and then a, a nice hoodie peeking out the back. It's just that kind of perfect in between kind of like comfy casuals. Another great way to kind of disguise the fact that you're wearing your, your comfy trackies or your loungewear is with a oversized coat. And this one from Free People is beautiful. Um, it's got that kind of like pinched your husband style shape. Um, and honestly, it's layered over a tracksuit. You would never even know, you could probably even stick your PJs on under there and do the school run and no one would be any of the wiser. It's a really, really beautiful piece. Um, another way that I like to elevate and I feel like this might be a little controversial um, and it's a look that I've just recently discovered and I'm loving um, with the coat and um, like a really simple tracksuit um, is to pair with a pair of knee high boots. Um, I said it would be controversial. Uh, these are Paris, Texas and they're a bit of a cult purchase this season and I'm so glad that I invested because they are just gorgeous, super comfy um, and like I say I'm making them work in every way that I can even with a tracksuit. Um, I just think yeah for me it works but I realise that maybe a Marmite look one way that is really, really easy to kind of um, give you a sports luxe kind of vibe is with a PU or a leather jogger. These are Zara um, and I just live in them. They work really, really well with just a, a, a plain t-shirt and a pair of trainers um, and I love them layered with a chunky knit. They just help to keep things, you know, the shape really casual um, without kind of compromising. Um, so they are definitely worth kind of investing in. Um, and then um, the shacket. I mean, where have you been in 2020 if you don't have a shacket? There are some really gorgeous plaid versions out there. I own a couple myself and they're a great throw on. Um, but a PU version is a really great way. Um, it's kind of that sort of in between from a, a blazer or um, a, a biker jacket. Um, this one in particular, I just think it gives a really, really sophisticated silhouette when it's belted um, without obviously being too smart um, because you've got the shacket shape. And again, I think layered with the, um, the PU joggers, it's, I mean, it's a really, really smart look, but actually quite casual pieces individually. Um, and again, I think with the chunky boots, um, or if you wanted to go really sophisticated, then a heel would work equally well. Um, and then just a couple of other ways that I just love to kind of lift the look um, is with some really simple gold jewellery. Um, as you can see, I really love my gold jewellery, a chunky bracelet or a chunky necklace the gold hardware on this cardigan or even just some really simple gold hoops slick of red lippy and you know instantly your look is elevated um, and you look like you've made way more effort than you probably actually have um, so yeah I hope there's some useful tips in there for you um, and I hope that you stay safe Thank you, Katie. That was so fab. Special thanks to her, to Zoe, and to the panel. On our next show, Georgie will be back with Ronnie Colby, celebrity florist and man behind the flowers at Soho House, who's here to show you how to make the perfect Christmas wreath. Laura and Georgie will be showing you all their most glamorous picks from the high street. Plus, it's the third instalment in our cocktail series. You won't want to miss it. In the meantime, please do comment below with anything else you'd like to see on the show. We're listening to your ideas, so please do keep them coming. Don't forget also to thumbs up, subscribe, and tell your friends. Bye-bye.